Today I want to look at some of Fourscore's annotation capabilities. They're really quite impressive. So uh, first thing you want to do is make sure I click on the suitcase in the upper right and go down here to settings and scroll down and we look at Apple Pencil and make sure that we have automatically enter annotation mode checked and make sure prevent finger drawing is checked. Close that and we take a look at annotation tools right under Apple Pencil. This is remember tool selection here and uh, I have it so that it does not remember the lasso, text, or erase tools but does remember stamps and shapes and I'll go into that in, in a bit and for default tool I have none and I'll explain why I do that in a bit as well. So those are the settings that I recommend and now I'm just going to tap in the center of the screen here. Now because I have automatically enter annotation mode if I just start scribbling with my Apple Pencil it will start writing. I don't have to actually go into the annotation menu to do that but if I want to change my annotation tool I can tap now with the Apple Pencil and set up with automatic annotation if I tap with the pencil it writes. So I have to tap with my finger to open the menu and then I can go to the pencil tool up in the upper right and now I've got the annotation menu here and this uh, blue and white one toward the right is the eraser. I'm going to use that to erase what I just wrote. Now because in my remember function I did not include the eraser, if I click done now and I start scribbling it will go back to the tool that it was on before I went to the eraser. Tap with my finger, go back to here, go back to the eraser, erase that. But if I go to another thing, for example, right now you can see that I have uh, a red um, line selected. If I go to, for example, this blue line and close that, now if I scribble, it will scribble with a blue line. And again, if I tap with my finger, go to the pencil, go to the eraser, and undo all of that, and if I close it, it will be back to the blue line because that was the last thing before the eraser that I used. So back to the pencil, back to the eraser, erase. So the various tools that you've got available here, uh, let me just, uh, uh, actually I'm going to go back to red because I really like red. So I'm going to back to this red line here and um, if you want to create new ones uh, I can I can duplicate that uh, with down at the bottom of this little menu here and then I could change the settings on the one I've duplicated it with in order to change the color or the saturation or the transparency etc. Uh, so that's the way you can add additional uh, pencil, uh, additional lines here and you've got some thick lines here if I wanted to really make a statement I could use that um, and I've got a thick but not so thick red line there and I've got these interesting yellow ones um, this will uh, do that. Okay, now I'm going to go back here to the eraser and get rid of all of these things I just did. Such fun. Okay, so go back to the red line and click done just so that I don't have that showing. Now I want to identify what instruments are playing here. So this is a uh, alto tenor tenor bass, but uh, if I try to write here, uh, my writing is not so good. So I'm going to go back here and erase that and close that. And by using two fingers, I can enlarge this. And now I can actually put my wrist on the screen because I have said not to do finger writing. So now I can I can write nice and small without a problem. So that's one way of doing that. And I do a lot with just freehand uh, notation in here. But let's say that you wanted to make that nice and neat. Uh, instead of making it just freehand script, I'm going to go back here and erase that. And this time I'm going to go to this T to the left of the eraser, which is the type tool. 
I'm going to enlarge that and just tap there and say Alto. And I can format that with uh, just at the top of the keyboard where it says Format. And I can change the size of the type. Um, I can change the, the font. I can change the color. I'm going to leave all those as they are. And I'm just going to tap somewhere on the screen here. Uh, and when it gets to this, these bright ones, I can adjust the where the right side is. I can move the uh, left by just holding on to that little circle there. And now I'm going to tap down here to add tenor. And tap on the screen to go back to this mode. This time I'm going to double tap on inside of there and then select all and copy. And then go down and create a new one and paste, which I did. Uh, just below the, where it says Format and Delete, there's uh, this little uh, square in the in a clipboard, it looks like. And I just used that to, to paste that. And so I'd move my tenor over here. And now I've got one more to do. B-A-S-S. -S. Tap somewhere. And move this over. And straighten these out, put them where, I, where they belong. And now I want them to be all aligned nicely. So another tool that's available up in the top toolbox is uh, to the left of uh, the text tool is a circle, and to the left of that is a ruler. I just tapped on that, and it brings up this ruler, which if I uh, put my finger on it, I can drag it up and down. If I put two fingers on it, I can rotate it. And I want to rotate it to 90 degrees, and I want to just put it over here and use that to align all of these things. So I'm just doing that by... I can use the pencil to do this. And I just want to make all these nice and lined up. And that looks pretty close to me. So I'm going to click Done. And there we go. Now the typewriting is nice and neat. While we're on the subject of the ruler tool, if I tap to the right side of the screen to go to the next page, uh, this is the end of the piece. And it is my convention to uh, identify, because I do half page turns, and I want to know when I can stop doing half page turns, I like to, I'm going to go into the annotation tool, drag the ruler over here, and go to this sort of medium-sized red line, and just drag down along here. And when you have the ruler out, it's going to automatically um, stay with the ruler, so you get a nice neat line there. Another thing I like to do is when I have repeats or anything like that, I like to identify them. Uh, I'm going to use this uh, uh, l uh, light yellow and just identify the repeats. And there we go. And let me just show you. I'm going to close the ruler by tapping on the ruler again. And I'm going to tap on this yellow rectangle here so you can see what settings I have. Um, so I have uh, mild saturation and uh, fairly low transparency. And I have it on overlay, which makes it so that it is, you know, the transparency works nicely. And that way also, if I keep going over the same thing, it'll keep getting darker, but I'm not gonna do that. Tap on that again to make it go away. And so now I have nice reminders of uh, where the repeats are so I don't have to search for them. And I see something up here near the top that I've written in before, but I can't quite see it because this menu is in the way. So in the upper right corner, there are these three little dashes. If I click in there, I can drag this down. And this is a breath mark uh, telling me I really need to breathe here. And uh, so I have also done other types of breath marks. One, another thing that you can do with the um, annotation tool is on the left side where you see these funny looking glasses. If I tap there, that brings up a whole list of various other things that I can I can use and some of these I have created like the glasses I actually created that one this uh, one to the right of the glasses which is uh, an indication of when to tap the page turn foot pedal is something I also created I created these triangle and circle as well you can see they're a little crude and uh, I also created this uh, 
oh, what's it called? Ellen Moore told me, and I keep forgetting, kustos, that's what it's, what it's called. That kustos is what you use to, uh, to indicate at the end of a line what the, the next note's going to be, so that if your eyes are a little slow in moving over, then you can use that to identify what the next note's going to be. But this is the one I created to identify a breath mark, my custom symbol for a breath mark. Right now it's a little large, so down at the bottom here I have a, a scroll thing to adjust the size, and I can also adjust the tint by clicking up here on the right side of this where it says tint. But um, I like this nice bright red, so I'm going to just click back and click on the that mark over here. Now at this point, I want to erase where I had written it in manual and type in here. And if I just tap there, it puts that in there. Now my symbol for a big breath is two of those. So now I know to take a big breath at that point. And I'm going to scroll this back up to the top and click Done and go to the previous page. Now these sharp signs, these, um, these Ficta, I did the same way. If I tap with my finger and bring up the pencil, you can see that there's a sharp sign here. And right now the tint is red. And it's, it's actually my, my current shade is a little lighter red than what I had used before. Um, but um, so I can add new sharp signs if I need to add other Ficta. So that's how that was done. Click Done. And now over here in the, uh, whoops, I'm on the Sharp tool. I want to go back to this. And you can see right here I have a, um, a tie indication, but it's a rather crude tie indication. And the reason I have it there I'm going to erase all of this right here. And there actually is a tie. You can see here that this software didn't do a very good job. It's actually right here. Uh, and uh, so it's hard to see. So what I'm going to do is get rid of that, is go in here to the second section on the left side. And there are a lot of different things. You can do a, a, a curved line under, a curved line over. You can do brackets. Another cool thing you have here is that actually you can add to a staff. Let me just demonstrate that. If I click right at the top of this staff and bring that down, I could actually extend the staff out and uh, write some more notes in there if I wanted to. I'm going to undo that with, on the right side of the menu, you have the left arrow and a right arrow. That will be to undo or redo. If I click the right arrow, it's redo. Left arrow is undo, because I want to undo that. But now I want to go to the, the slur indication here. Tap on the top there. And I want to do a nice, and it's right now blue. Uh, I'm, I'm OK with blue for this. And I'm going to just tap right near this note and just drag that line out so that it slurs out. And you can see it already has the slur on the other side, but I'm going to reinforce that by just doing that to make sure it's clear that that's what's going on there. I have a breath mark in measure 13 here. I could erase that and go to this other breath mark indicators that I had created. Just close that and tap there. And any other breaths that I want. Notice also that I had circled this note because this is going down in scalar fashion and then it skips to a third. And so I circled that note to make sure I know that it's a, it's a third. Now, suppose that I want to change the color of that. It's right now blue, but I really want it to stand out more. Again, if I tap with my finger in the middle and go to the pencil, this uh, circle here allows me to select an area. And I'm just going to circle around that. And I want to change the color of it. So I go to these three little circles and change the hue. And I want to make a nice bright red and full opacity. That's just what I want. So I'm going to tap somewhere else on the screen. And now I have changed that from blue to red. Those are some of the basic things that you can do with the annotation tool. And a lot of what I do is just writing. Uh, tap with my finger, tap with the pencil, and go back to just the red, um, red line. And now the reason that I like to not have a default object for this is suppose that I want to do a lot of breath marks. I can just close that and any place where I want to have a breath mark, of course there's a rest here so it doesn't matter, but I can, I can do that. I want to breathe here and here 
here and here. So uh, I can just keep repeating those because it, I don't, I, it'll just remember the last thing I had it on. And uh, whereas if I had a default, then every time I stopped, it would default back to whatever that default is. And I don't necessarily want that. So in general, I like to have it on the line. So I'm going to go back in and manually select that, close it. And now um, next time I come in, it looks like this. Hope that was helpful.